In this video, we're going to complete example one. We're going to learn how to simplify algebraic fractions. We're going to be covering six questions. Here you can see three of them. And then we've got questions D, E, and F to finish off with. Now, before we get into the example, I've written down a couple of dot points. The first being the golden rule, which is to multiply or divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number or expression. The second dot point says, look for expressions that can be factorized and then cancel. These two dot points are actually pretty much one and the same. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that by doing a really simple example. And the example I'm going to simplify for you is 4 over 8. Now, when you look at that, you know the answer. If I simplify 4 over 8, I get 1 over 2. Both these fractions are exactly the same. They just represent 1 half. So what am I actually doing when I simplify 4 over 8 and write 1 over 2? Well, I'm dividing the top and the bottom of the fraction by the same thing. I'm dividing them by 4. And that's what you're doing when you simplify fractions. You're just dividing the top and bottom by the same number. And this is where the golden rule comes from. The golden rule is to divide or also to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number. Now, I mentioned that the golden rule is basically the same as the second dot point, to look for expressions that can be factorized and then cancel. So what do I mean by that? Well, when we factorize, we, we take out a factor. And I'm going to do that with the 8. I'm going to take the number 8 and turn it into 2 times 4, which I'm allowed to do because 2 times 4 is the same as 8. Now, with the 4, I'm going to make that 1 times 4 because 1 times 4 is the same as 4. Now, if the golden rule states that you're allowed to multiply the top and the bottom of a fraction by the same number, then surely we're allowed to unmultiply the top and bottom by the same number, which is actually what we're doing when we cancel common factors. We're just unmultiplying the 4, which then takes us to 1 over 2. So when we use the second dot point, when we factorize and then cancel, like below, we're actually using the golden rule, except in reverse, we're unmultiplying the top and bottom by something. So let's get into the example now. I find that people tend to use the golden rule when working with the numbers 15 and 10 on question A, and they tend to use the second dot point when they're trying to cancel x's and y's. So we'll start by dividing the top and bottom by 5. That's using the golden rule. 15 divide 5 is 3. So we get 3 at the top, as well as x squared y. And then 10 divide 5 gives us 2. And then we get x y squared down the bottom. And quite often what I teach people to do is to go, all right, well, x squared, which we have here, means two x's. So I'm going to rewrite it with two x's and then a y. And down below, I've got one x and two y's. And when you write it like this, it makes it really easy to cancel. I can cancel out one x above and below and one y above and below, leaving us with 3x at the top and 2y at the bottom. So let's now move on to question B. Now, as soon as you see an expression such as 4c plus 6, where you've got two terms and a plus between them, you need to factorize that. All right, so focusing on the denominator, how would I factorize 4c plus 6. Well, they have a common factor of 2. So I'm going to factor out the 2. And then 2 times 2c gives me 4c. 
and 2 times 3 gives me 6. And with the 4, I'm actually going to turn that into 2 times 2. And the reason I'm doing that is because I factored out a 2, I want to do the same with the 4. Now that I've done that, I can cancel out 1, 2 above and 1, 2 below, leaving me with 2 over 2c plus 3. And that's as far as I can go when trying to factorise question B. Let's now move on to question C. This time I've got two expressions, one over the other. Both of them have a plus symbol between them. So I want to factorise them straight away, both of them. 5y and 10 have a common factor of 5. So I'm going to factor out the 5. 5 times y will give me 5y. And 5 times 2 will give me 10. For 3y plus 6, I'm going to factor out 3 this time. 3 times y gives me 3y. And 3 times 2 will give me 6. And this time, I can cancel out both sets of brackets because they're exactly the same. I cancel out my y plus 2 above and below, leaving me with 5 over 3. And that's a really nice one. I like it when I can simplify an algebraic expression and get an answer where there are no pronumerals, such as 5 over 3. Let's now move on to question D. We're getting into our harder three questions here. Once again, we've got this plus symbol between two terms. So we've got to factorize both expressions above and below here. Let's start with the numerator, the top of our fraction. What's the common factor here? Well, as I've mentioned before, when you've got powers, you take the pronumeral with the lower power. You've got a to the power of 3 and a to the power of 2. So I'm going to factor out the lower power, the a squared. When looking at the b's, we've got b to the power of 2 and b with no power. So the one with no power is the one we factor out, the b. And then we put in our set of brackets and we think to ourselves, a squared b what would I multiply that by to get a to the power of 3 and b to the power of 2? Well, I would need to multiply that by a, b. And then a squared b times 1 would give us a squared b. All right, let's look at our denominator here. We've got 2ab plus 2. The common factor here is the 2. And now... 2 times AB will give me 2AB, and 2 times 1 will give me 2. And now all we need to do is cancel out our brackets AB plus 1 because they're the same, which leaves us with A squared B above and 2 below. Let's now look at question E. Once again, we've got a plus between two terms, and we've also got a minus between two terms. So we'll start by factorizing the numerator here. We'll take out a common factor of 4. 4 times x will give us 4x. And 4 times 2 will give us 8. Now, how are we going to factorize the denominator this time? And I'm hoping this looks really familiar to some people. This is an example of the difference of two squares. And we know that because it's got two terms with a minus sign between them. And we can square root both of these terms, which is the same as unsquaring each term. So when I factorize this, I'm going to have two sets of brackets one with a plus and one with a minus. Now the square root of 4 is 2. 
So that's going to be my second term in each set of brackets. And the square root of x squared, which is the same as unsquaring x squared, gives me x. Now, if you don't know what I'm doing here, then you need to look at a previous video I did on the difference of two squares. So my denominator is x plus 2, x minus 2. Now let's see if we can do any cancelling. Well, we've got two sets of brackets that are exactly the same. We can cancel these two, which leaves us with 4 at the top and x minus 2 at the bottom. And I don't need these brackets anymore because x minus 2 is now on its own. Okay, moving on to question F. It looks like I've got another example where I can use the difference of two squares. So we'll start with the numerator here. Two sets of brackets, one with a plus and one with a minus. The square root of 9 is 3. And the square root of x squared, or the process of unsquaring x squared, gives me x. What about our denominator here? This one also needs two sets of brackets. But this one is not an example of the difference of two squares this time. So how do we factorize this? Well, I'm hoping some of you remember we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give 6 and add to give 5. And those two numbers are 2 or positive 2 and 3 or positive 3. And then because we've got x squared at the beginning, we need to write x plus 2, x plus 3. And if you're not sure how I factorize this expression, then you actually need to go back to a previous video I did where I showed you how to factorize quadratic expressions. Anyway, let's write this now as a factorized expression. The top of my fraction or the numerator has x plus 3 and x minus 3. And the denominator or the bottom of my fraction has x plus 2, x plus 3. And then I can see that there are two sets of brackets that are the same, the x plus 3s. So after cancelling them, I get x minus 3 at the top, and I don't need the set of brackets because it's on its own now, and I get x plus 2 at the bottom or for the denominator of the fraction. All right, now before we conclude this video, I want to point out a very common mistake. And let's say we have the example uh, 3x plus 6 over 6. Now something that people commonly do is they decide to cancel out the 6's because they're the same and they give a response of 3x which is completely wrong. And what's wrong with this? Well, when you look at the golden rule, it's all about multiplying or dividing. It has nothing to do with adding or subtracting. So when a number is added, it is not okay to cancel it out. Why is that? Well, let's look at a really simple example. Let's say I had the fraction 2 over 3 or 2 thirds. If by this logic I can cancel out numbers that are added above and below the fraction, then I could rewrite this fraction as 1 plus 1 instead of 2, and 2 plus 1 instead of 3, and then cancel out the two ones that were added, giving me 1 half, or 1 over 2. And it's really obvious that 1 half is not the same as 2 thirds. So what do you do when a number has been added? Well, basically what I've been telling you all along to factorize. Let's redo this question, in fact. Let's simplify 3x plus 6 over 6. So the first thing I'm going to do is factorize the numerator or the top of the fraction. I can factor out a 3 and in brackets 
I have x plus 2. And then down below, I leave a 6. So why is factorizing such an important step when you want to simplify a fraction? Well, it takes something that has a plus, such as my 3x plus 6, and turns it into something that has multiplication. This is, in fact, 3 times x plus 2. And as soon as you bring multiplication into your fraction, you can now use the golden rule. Now, I actually should have factorized the 6. I should have made the 6 3 times 2. And now I can cancel. Now I can cancel because I have multiplication instead of addition. And I can rewrite this as x plus 2 over 2. Anyway, that concludes our video on example 1. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.